Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below for discounts on different car mods and products. All right, let's get into the drive. Hello and welcome. Today we are driving a 2021 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. And this has the leather interior package. I would like to thank Flood Ford in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to drive and review this car. Check out my full in-depth review currently out on the channel to get all the details and an in-depth dive about this Mustang. So this Mustang is powered by Ford's 2.3 liter turbocharged EcoBoost making 310 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque here. This is also mated with Ford's and GM's co-developed 10-speed automatic shiftable transmission. And let's get a startup of that right now. This is of course a rear wheel drive Mustang and it achieves zero to 60 in under five seconds with a 155 mile an hour top speed. This gets 21 MPG city, 29 highway and 24 combined out of a 15.5 gallon fuel tank. This rides on 19 inch, five spoke gloss black aluminum wheels and that is on 255 wide tires. There are solid rotors all around with ventilated ones in the front and solids in the rear. This has blind spot monitoring, driver passenger knee airbags, forward collision alert with braking, lane keep warning with assist, and auto high beams. All right, let's get this Mustang out on the road. So pop it into drive, this is of course the auto. I have never personally driven any uh, new Mustang, so this is pretty cool. So this current one has about uh, 1800 miles on it or so, and it does, uh, it does sticker around $35,000. It does have the full digital uh, uh, gauge cluster, which is very nice, and it does have shift paddles, so we'll be trying those out as well. Alrighty, so we are in drive. And there are those shift paddles. And we are just back in drive right now. All right, the brakes feel pretty good. So we'll be testing out all the different drive modes and doing a zero to 60 in a little bit, as well as uh, testing out the different steering modes. There are a few. All right, so similar to in the uh, Ford Ranger I drove, which has the same engine as this, uh, the engine was just very, very close to the firewall. So it was very loud in which uh, you could hear the turbo spool up like aggressively. You could hear it, it sounded more like a fan. Not necessarily a negative thing. It sounds kind of cool, but uh, it was just kind of weird. I wasn't expecting it to be as loud as it was. So we'll see in a little bit just uh, how loud it is in this EcoBoost Mustang. So as for ride quality, I'm just in normal mode. It's uh, pretty comfortable to drive. Uh, the steering feel is still pretty direct, as you can see. It's, uh, it's not exactly light. Uh, so that's normal steering. Let me pop it into uh, comfort steering, see if it gets lighter. So now we're in comfort. Okay, it gets a little bit lighter, nothing too much. Let's pop it then into, with these toggles, pump it, pop it into sport steering. So now we're in sport. Okay, it does seem to tighten up just a little bit, nothing too insane. All right, has a lot of torque. Even at two to 3,000 RPM feels uh, very torquey and very nice. All right, so we're just in normal, but let's actually pop ourselves into sport plus mode, see how that feels in a moment brakes feel great. They're not slotted or drilled rotors, but they feel uh, very, very confidence inspiring in here. Not overly touchy. I can control them uh, comfortably enough, but they feel really good. Okay. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Ride felt pretty good right there. It's a busy transmission. Not that that's a bad thing, but it is just very busy. In here, obviously, you can, it has 10 gears to cycle through, so it has a lot to do. All right, so we're on this little side road. Let's uh, put her in sport and just uh, punch it a little bit. All right, 
right? So that was 60 right there. Feels great. Feels great doing that. Feels very stable and planted, but it, um, you can hear the engines blow up, of course. You can probably hear a lot of fan noise. That is just the turbo. Let's try the paddles. So now we're in six, five, four, three. Pretty good paddle response. A little jumpy from three to two. So with big RPM jumps, it likes to be a bit jerky, but let's just put it in drive. See how this corner feels at about 40. All right, feels really good with grip. A little bit of body roll, nothing too drastic. Uh, it felt pretty good on the suspension in that regard. Likes to stay revved up for a little bit until you really uh, are basically not tapping the pedal is when it uh, tends to do any of that stuff. However, we are in Sport Plus, so <laughs> that's probably me. Let's not be in drag strip. Let's go back to normal. Do some normal driving for a few moments. Okay, yeah, so right there it'll kick way down into seventh gear already, and we're only going 34, so... As for the interior in here, it uh, it's pretty good, for my, in my opinion, for the price point in here. Uh, this is definitely a much higher-end interior, and uh, yeah, it feels very good. A lot of soft-touch materials, a few more than I was expecting, and um, yeah, overall it's pretty nice. Let's test out the turning radius just a little bit, so we'll just uh, see how well we can do right here. All right, so yeah, it doesn't have a great turning radius. It's not going to. It's not a tiny sports car, but it's okay. Put it back and drive. It is a torquey little motor. It really does like to um, keep you pretty well in the power band. It seems to die off a little bit once you get above, like, say, 5,000 RPM, but overall, it's uh, pretty fun to drive so far. It's just an EcoBoost. It's not meant to be, like, uh, tra tracking lap times or anything. This is not the GT, it's not trying to be the GT, but it's respectable. It's pretty fun to drive, it's more fun than most people's cars anyway, uh, day to day. So, that's pretty cool. Let's try those paddles again. So seven, six, five, this is a normal, so it'll reply a little slower. Yeah, so three to two is very jerky. So when it has a big jump in RPMs, it doesn't really like to do that, so. It's not rough, but it just really like bucks you once, so that's a little interesting. As for the ride here in normal, I'm on a pretty dang rough road. We have terrible roads around here, and uh, for the bumps, so far it's okay. I've been pretty soft steering as well. Let's uh, pop it back into normal, normal steering. So this is what you'd be like dailying it in. See, I'm thir and 37 miles an hour, gear eight. That's a very rough spot in the road, but. It absorbs it pretty well. It can still reply, though, when you're in regular mode, so that's good. If you stomp it, it's not completely tuned into uh, granny mode or anything like that. Yeah, so that road and that spot in the road in my car is like a nightmare to go over, but this just handled it very, very well. And I just drive a Volkswagen Passat, so uh, this does have a pretty good balance in the ride. It really can uh, ride pretty smooth or pretty stiff, whichever you like. All right, let's pop her into Sport Plus again and just see how it is uh, with a little bit of a faster acceleration, just getting out of here. I'm not gonna do anything stupid, I'll just uh, do a little bit of a good acceleration in full auto mode, not paddles, momentarily. So I will get back to you when I have a clear road. Yeah, so visibility is pretty dang good in here. Let's see, traction's on and everything. It really likes to keep its gear, which is a good thing in my opinion. Uh, keep the gear, keep all the power. Okay, here's a nice spot. We have a red light. <laughs> so let's actually put ourselves into track mode, full auto and everything. We're in sport. Let's actually do a pretty decent acceleration. All right, and there's 60. That's from about 10, that's not from uh, from anything insane, that's probably from about uh, five miles an hour we did that, five or ten rolling. Now we're just back in normal mode. But uh, yeah, it's really not all that bad. You can feel the gear shifts, uh, which is in some ways more uh, more fun, but in other cars sometimes this uh, you can't even really feel the gears shifting as much. Uh, it does feel a little more apparent in this because it's trying to get harder, sportier shifts. I don't dislike it, but I know some people may, uh, may like uh, a more effortless type of feel. Uh, to the transmission shifting. For the steering feel, I love that you can change it so much. So 
Uh, I'm in normal. I'll put it into sport. Just in normal driving mode, but it really stiffens up. Look at this. So that is really good. I like having that uh, sort of control. And we'll just keep it in normal. Yeah, so cruising here at 55 miles per hour, it is really very quiet in here, much quieter than I was expecting. And I even have the air conditioning on a tiny bit. So it is very, very quiet in here. For visibility sideways, I think it's pretty good. It's a little bit of a low roof line, but that's obviously expected. It's a fast back coupe. It's gonna have a sloping roof line. That was a terrible move by that person. Um, I get to test the brakes, felt good. Um, in the rear visibility, it's very, very good. At least compared to other things, like in the Dodge Challenger, it's a bit rough. In the Camaro, I, I haven't driven one, but I believe I've sat in Camaros before and they were an absolute nightmare to try and uh, see your way out of. So luckily the uh, visibility, I think this is the best out of, uh, I guess you could still call it the Challenger a pony car. So um, the Charger is a bit better, but the Challenger is specifically is very, very bad uh, for visibility. So I think it's a pretty nice package so far. So I think this would be a great daily. And for people who want to say they have a Mustang, you know, it's not the worst thing to say you have an EcoBoost. It's respectable. It's really not anything too bad. So overall the drive, it's pretty fun in my opinion for what it is. And in just a moment, we will do a real zero to 60 over on this long straightaway. All right, so through most of the torque band from uh, like 1800 up to like 3500 RPM, I love it. It really does feel nice and torquey and grabby down there. So uh, really it's a pretty wide and long power band. Uh, for, for the peak area, I really like it so far down low, which means this will be a lot of fun driving daily in more city type traffic. It's not obviously going to be a, a speed demon. It's not going to be a zero to 60 line car. It's not meant to really be, but it's pretty dang fun when you're getting up to speed in this. Uh, it just feels like a really nice tug. It really feels pretty good. Alrighty, so we will pop ourselves, uh, we'll wait a moment, but we will pop ourselves into track mode. We will pop ourselves into sport steering. And we can actually turn traction off for this one. So we'll see if we get any uh, tire spin or wheel spin out of this. I believe we'll get a little bit. I'm not gonna burn the tires away, but uh, we might get a little screech. All right, and we'll go into sport and we will see what happens. Doing a rough zero to 60. All right, and we'll do like a little bit of a launch. Little wheel spin, not much. Foots to the floor, 40, 50, and 60. Okay. It likes to buck you around with this transmission a little bit more. You can feel uh, the shifts. Maybe a little bit harsher than I would personally like, but uh, it's pretty fun to go up to speed. Although once you hit about 40, it kind of dies off in the power band. It's expected, but it um, still feels really nice at lower speeds, like uh, doing city type of driving. Feels very nice. And let's do a little U-turn here. Yeah, so that's about 75 right there. That's about as far as fast as I'm going to go. But it is, uh, yeah, it feels very nice getting up there. It's very loud. That's not really a bad thing because it's a four cylinder engine. It wouldn't be loud on its own. The turbo gives it a lot of, uh, you know, audible noise. So it's uh, a nice little trade off for that. You don't have a V6 or a V8, but you do get the noise because it has a very loud turbocharger. Now let's just go back into normal driving mode now. Yeah, the steering is very nice up here. It's not like to the point where it's gonna like throw you around the road if you accidentally tap the steering, which I like. Although it's very tight steering, it's a good feedback when you put it in sport steering mode. It uh, It's doable. It's not stressful in, in the way some cars are where their steering gets so tight that, uh, you know, it's just very, very stressful to even, even tap the wheel. So we're in normal mode. Let's pop back into paddles. All right, let's turn traction on because I don't, yeah, we don't need traction off. <laughs> it's very torquey. Once you hit about 25 in that first gear. All right, so for my overall thoughts on driving this Mustang, I think it is a very, very 
fun Mustang to drive for what it is. It's a four-cylinder EcoBoost, but it's a lot more fun than I was expecting, honestly. And this is just an auto. Uh, occasionally, they come in manual, so that would be even more fun. So uh, as for, it's a really torquey, fun engine at lower speeds. It's not uh, as fun at high speeds, but it has definitely adequate passing power, and uh, it drives pretty tight. Really not too much body roll. Pretty good for a Mustang. And uh, yeah, that'll just about wrap up this video then. Thank you very much to Flood Ford in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to both drive and review this car. Their link is down below. Make sure to check them out. Alrighty. Thank you very much for watching and take care.